Let's talk about using the auto injector. After Ollie's food allergy diagnosis, I began hearing other families' food allergy stories. The stories were grueling at times and also healing to know I wasn't the first to go through this. And others made it through the most challenging days too. Hearing other parents discuss their food allergy story helped me move through my grief. I felt seen and heard. I saw myself in whatever situation the parents described, trying to treat anaphylaxis with an antihistamine, holding my child in my arms and hoping his reaction would subside because I was afraid to go to the hospital and make a big deal out of nothing. Feeling hopeless in a doctor's office because we weren't getting the care and answers we needed. I saw myself grieving, full of fear, and completely unprepared. And I felt most unprepared, not in feeding situations, but in responding to emergencies, especially when it came to deciding when and how to use the auto injector. It felt like the world's biggest responsibility all fell on my shoulders. It was a responsibility I never imagined when creating my postpartum Pinterest board. In this module, we'll discuss the importance of an auto-injector, gaining confidence in using it, and teaching your child how to do the same, even at the youngest ages. If you take anything from this course, let it be this. The only way to treat your child's anaphylactic reaction is with an epinephrine auto-injector. I'll say it again, the only way to treat your child's anaphylactic reaction is with an epinephrine auto injector. Using one confidently is the most important thing you can do for your child. Antihistamines and over-the-counter medications will not save your child's life. Auto injectors usually come in sets of two. Pediatricians and allergists can prescribe them for you, and I recommend asking them to prescribe two sets or more. If you like, you can also call the auto injector manufacturer first, or your insurance if you have it, to find out how many sets you can get. If you don't have insurance, you may wanna ask how much each set costs. Auto injectors can be intimidating. They definitely were for me. I didn't think I'd be able to use Ollie's auto injector as my first line of defense, which made me doubt my ability to protect and care for him. Now that I'm on the other side of the most challenging days, I can tell you there's no reason to be nervous, but I totally get it if you are. Auto injectors are easy to use. They're life-saving tools that empower you to protect your child. Whenever I was overwhelmed with the responsibility to care so closely and carefully for Ollie's life, I tell myself this, in life, we are called to be brave and courageous. No one is immune to this request. And this is one of those moments. You can do this. When the auto injector is placed into the outer thigh, it feels like a quick, uncomfortable pinch. After the epinephrine is administered, your child will feel hyper, like they've had a couple cups of coffee. That's all. There have been zero reported fatalities of epinephrine used for anaphylactic allergies. Believe it or not, allergists' biggest concern with auto injectors is you accidentally injecting your finger or hand instead of your child or the auto injector misfiring when you don't have a backup. Things happen. So always, always have two auto injectors on hand. Each set of epinephrine auto injectors should come with a trainer or injector that doesn't have a needle or contain medication. Practicing with the trainer is crucial, not only for your confidence, but also for your child's familiarity and comfort with it. We practice using an auto injector like we do when training and role playing CPR to prepare us if our child has an anaphylactic emergency. I recommend keeping your auto injector trainer by your toothbrush and practicing before bed every night until you get the hang of it. You should also lend trainers to other family members and caregivers who might find themselves in a situation where they need to use the real thing. I also recommend scenario-based practice or role-playing as often as possible so you're prepared to use an auto-injector in any setting. Role-playing and thinking through an emergency before it happens will reduce your anxiety and help you remain calm if a severe reaction occurs. Staying calm when your child has an anaphylactic reaction I know is really hard, but it is extremely important. 
Our children sense our anxiety and fear, and our responses inform theirs. Since an elevated heart rate can make allergic reactions more severe, you want to stay as calm as possible. If you'd like to see an example of how I role play with my auto injector, I have included it for you in this module's resources. Once you're comfortable using the trainer, introduce it to your child so they get comfortable with it too. I introduced Ollie to his auto injector when he was one. If you're concerned you or your child may mistake the trainer for the actual epinephrine injector, you can wrap it and brightly color tape around the trainer and explain to your child that they are only to practice with the taped trainer. The other epinephrine injectors are for emergencies only. Use whatever language feels appropriate when explaining the difference between using a trainer and an actual epinephrine injector and meet your child where they're at. A one-year-old will understand things very differently than a three-year-old will. The more familiar your child is with an auto injector, the better. Teach them how, why, and where you'll inject them if they have a severe allergic reaction and let them try injecting your thigh. These moments are great opportunities to discuss how common food and environmental allergies are and the importance of being able to help others. I'll say more about that in a few minutes. The rule of thumb for giving an injection is to use the epinephrine injector whenever you see two or more symptoms occurring at once. Symptoms such as swollen lips, hives, GI issues, vomiting, labored breathing, runny nose or red watery eyes, etc. can happen immediately after ingestion as well as hours later. After Oliver would have symptoms like this and he was safe and everything was back to normal again, I would record symptoms like this and what he ate in a food journal so I could take it into his allergist and try and figure out what it was that caused these symptoms. There are excellent resources at the end of this module for anyone nervous about using an auto injector or isn't sure when to use one. I recommend listening to the podcast Epi First, Epi Fast and checking out FAIR's Recognizing and Responding to Anaphylaxis resource. This handout offers a visual guide for parents and other caregivers who are still learning to identify when an injection is needed. I have also included a resource in this module with tips for auto injector maintenance. Let's return to something I mentioned earlier. Whenever I discussed auto injectors with Oliver, I emphasized that food allergies are normal and common to shift the focus off of him and more onto the onus and human responsibility to provide care for everyone. This shift in focus from him needing an auto injector for his allergies to educating ourselves and practicing emergency response so that we can provide care for anyone with an allergic reaction helped us avoid the tendency to label food allergies as bad. Food allergies are to be taken seriously, but they're not bad. And since food allergies are a part of being human for many of us, knowing how to use an auto injector might save someone's life. Ollie's grandma has a shellfish allergy and has an EpiPen for emergencies. Once Ollie was able to use his auto injector, I taught him how to use his grandma's auto injector, which requires a bit more oomph to get the auto injector to pop out, which he loves. And we're all proud that he can help his grandma if she has an anaphylactic reaction. Knowing someone else who uses an auto injector helped show Oliver that food allergies are common and having them shouldn't make him feel different. If you can, I absolutely recommend introducing your child to other kids and adults with food allergies. Your child is normal and you don't want them thinking otherwise. Cultivating your child's empathy is so important. And knowing how to care for others is a beautiful and highly transferable life skill. There is no too soon or too early when developing your child's confidence and compassion. There's also no too late for developing yours. While learning to use an auto injector is the most important thing you can do for your child right now, there are other ways to help keep them safe that you can also start now. Let's talk more about that in the next module.